Hello guys, today we are going to analyze the model we created and at the end we all interpret the results. Before we go for analyzing the structure, we all give support conditions to our foundations. The restraints window open up which provide us the options to restrain the translations and rotation degree of freedom of a joint. For a fixed joint, all the translational and rotational degree of freedom will be restrained form factored and unfactored load combinations that would be applied onto a structure. We have done these all and everything seems well. We will start analyzing the structure. Here we can get to see the real power of software. If we have went to analyze this structure by hand, it would have taken us days to analyze such 3D structure. With the help of e-tabs, we can do analysis of complex structures in seconds. We have finished analyzing the structure which took only few seconds thanks to e -tab. Now we all interpret the analysis results. The first thing that you should interpret after analyzing is displacement of structure under the action of various load applied. If structure is getting displaced weirdly, it is clear indication that you have applied the loads incorrectly onto the structure. As you can see our structure displaced downward under the action of dead load, which is what should have happened. That shows that we have applied the dead load correctly. You can know the displacement of points by hovering onto them. The right hand corner have displaced down to a value of 1.06 mm from the original position that this grey shadow line is showing. You can see the deflection in the elevation window too. Activate it and hit apply. I will show an interesting fact. The beams of the story 4 deflected more than compared to beams underneath it. This is because there is no story above fourth story because of which the ends of beam are not fully fixed resulting in increase in bending moment at between. The fixity of joints increase as we go down along the height of the building hence the reduced deflection at the midpoint of beams. We have applied live load only onto slabs which is quite less as compared to dead load of entire structure. So the structure should deflect quite less as compared to dead load. Let's hit apply to confirm that. Yes indeed the structure deflected less as compared to dead load. The loads that require extra attention while applying onto structure are earthquake and wind load. So let's see their effect onto our structure. Select EQX plus from the drop down list. If the structure 4 is applied from left hand side i.e. in the positive x direction, the structure should deflect towards right direction. So let's see if they deflect towards right direction. Yes indeed it deflected towards right hand side. You might have heard that IS code 1893 restricts the displacement of top story by an amount of 0.004 times the building height. The graph shows deflection in mm along the x axis and name of story along y axis. As you can see the top story get deflected the most. To find out how much it deflected you can see the max deflection at the bottom of the graph. You can see that our structure deflected to a maximum of 10.46 mm under wind load which is quite less from the safe limit. Hence our structure qualifies under lateral deflection check. First we are going to see the bending moment generated by dead load in beams and columns. For that select dead load from the drop down list. Now the real confusion starts from here. What are these moment 3-3, moment 2-2, shear 3-3 and shear 2-2. In our engineering we only read simple one direction shear force. What is this 3-3 and 2-2? Okay, let's clear the confusion through a diagram. So the important points that you can take from this presentation is we are going to focus on the axial force. We all focus on V2 as this is our major shear force. We all ignore V3 as this is minor shear force for us. Here comes the most famous bending moment diagram for continuous beams. As you can see at suppose there is a hogging bending moment. That means we have to provide reinforcement on the top face of beam so that beam can take tension forces. As you can see the bending moment at the middle of top floor beam is more than as compared to bottom beams as the top beam is partially fixed as compared to bottom beam. For live load the bending moment is going to be quite less. Let's see. Yes indeed it is. As you can see the shear force is quite less as compared to dead load which is what it should be. Coming to earthquake load positive x direction. Beams do not see a major shear force. It's the column who suffers in shear due to earthquake loading. 
Note columns are good at taking the axial loads but not the shear forces. Due to this extra shear produced by earthquake load, we have to provide more shear reinforcement, i.e. tie-up bars, which ultimately increases the cost of the structure. Coming to the earthquake loads, we get to see an interesting pattern in axial forces. Only the outer columns are experiencing the axial loads. The central columns are almost free from axial loads. This is because the earthquake load from the left is trying to overturn the building from the left. This overturning force creates compression on the right hand side and tension on the left hand side. You can see all major forces more in detail for a particular element in one window by right clicking on it like this. In this window you can switch to different load cases like this. This window comes in handy when you are designing a critical element for a heavy important structure and you want to see the values of components more in detail form. In order to see the load coming on foundations i.e. the support reactions we will click on display support reaction button from the top toolbar. The load coming on the joint one from top story is 405.5 kN. To find out for what unfactored load combination this joint is getting the maximum load go to display menu and click on display tables. In tables expand analysis section then results then reactions and finally click on design reaction. This table will provide you the reaction for various load combinations but we are only interested in unfactored loads. So for joint 1, we can see these are the unfactored loads we should focus on. 